Nexco says that the NASDAQ is in a bear market, could even be heading lower. How much lower? It's described as nothing short of breathtaking, a points drop never before seen on the US markets. The plunge was sparked by a jump in US inflation. The fear, a bigger hike in interest rates, the only remedy. Mark Twain once said, history doesn't repeat itself, but it does rhyme. And certainly as investors, we can draw lessons from previous cycles. And we do know that as interest rates rise, this typically does spell trouble for economies and markets. The lags between policy and the impact on the economy are uncertain. But typically what we see is that as interest rates rise, they expose recklessness and speculation, leading to a cooling of animal spirits and ultimately lower market valuations and a slower economy. We begin our report with the abrupt closures of three banks in a matter of days that are now sending shockwaves across sectors of the economy and raising concerns about the U.S. banking system. Now, we want to go back to the breaking news that we told you about earlier. Silvergate Capital is going to be winding down and liquidating its bank. Meanwhile, Signature Bank marks the third largest bank failure in U.S. history. Major development in the banking world. The FDIC just reported the California regulator shut down Silicon Valley Bank. This was a run on a bank with the difference in Silicon Valley, not regular customers of a high street bank, but tech firm CEOs here, startup bosses. And it's really in this context that we need to think about some of the financial accidents we've seen over the last year. The collapse in the growth stocks in 2022, the guilt crisis last autumn, and more recently, the troubles at the Silicon Valley Bank. The ripple effects from the collapse of Silicon Valley Bank on Friday are being felt across the world. We start with the troubled global banking sector. European markets have closed down more than 3%, spooked by a major sell-off of shares in the Swiss banking giant Credit Suisse. The beleaguered company Credit Suisse will borrow $81 billion from Switzerland's central bank. Credit Suisse hopes the intervention will reassure investors the company has enough money to stay afloat. Yeah, so markets have certainly gone down today, hit a lot by the bank banking stocks, of course, Deutsche Bank certainly in focus. It does follow on from the saga we have seen across the globe, particularly from the US. The stresses in the financial sector remind us of the financial crisis of 2007 and 2008. But there are some important differences, and in particular, because that crisis was relatively recent, the large banks have been more heavily regulated and have been running more prudent policies than what they were doing back then. Nevertheless, we need to recognize that the U.S. regional banks will be tightening credit conditions. And as a result, we expect the U.S. to move into recession later this year. As you move into slowdown and recession, typically investments like bonds and gold can offer some protection in client portfolios because they do well as the Fed pivots and starts to cut rates. Cash is also an interesting investment because it does offer some yield. But you do need to be a bit careful because in these kinds of markets, things can happen quite quickly and typically in the midst of recessions is when you get the big valuation opportunities. So make sure that you have a strategy that is nimble enough to adapt quickly. Hey, Jonathan, yeah, Lisa Cook speaking here at the AEA annual conference in New Orleans. She says inflation remains far too high. The Federal Reserve Chair told Congress last week they were prepared to increase rate hikes and quicken the pace to try and get a handle on inflation. You can see here inflation has shot up over the last two years, hit more than 11% in October, what we assume is the peak started to fall away and the assumption was it would carry on falling this year but today of course it's peaked back up to 10.4 percent so that trend has been broken what's different this time well in the 26 years that i've been watching markets i've never seen inflation be quite so persistent as it has been in the last couple of years and we've talked about this when we talk about a new regime for markets so we need to continue to watch those u.s labor market statistics very closely for signs that the fed is winning its battle against inflation